Hi, I'm uh, Professor Darlene Lebe. I'm an Associate Professor at the U University of Cape Town in South Africa. And I'm at this uh, 25th Rhino Egypt conference to speak about transorbital surgery um, as an adjunct to endonasal surgery. Essentially, transorbital surgery was described by Chris Moe about uh, five or six years ago and he uh, proposed different uh, quadrants to access the orbit as a natural corridor to certain sinus and skull based lesions. So for the last four years in, in Cape Town, South Africa, we've been working on the transorbital surgery pathways and essentially the four pathways, superior, medial, inferior and lateral, can be used to access lesions of the orbit itself, so for orbital tumours, but also for uh, sinonasal disease that infl affect the, the uh, orbit as well, for your paranasal sinuses that are difficult to access uh, via traditional uh, approaches, as for instance the endoscopic Lothrop operation um, cannot address lesions of the lateral uh, aspect of the frontal sinus. So combining that with a superior orbital approach, we can now address not only midline lesions, but also uh, laterally located lesions, uh, frontal sinuses, the swenoid sinus, for example, for Sternberg canal defects. Um, so the, there are many um, applications for the surgery. Usually we work uh, ENT and ophthalmologists together, very similar to transsvenoidal pituitary surgery, where your ENT and a neurosurgeon works together. So the ENT and the ophthalmologist will start off making the incision, say to the medial uh, orbit via pre-curricular approach. And this gives us uh, great access to the medial orbit for orbital lesions, the anterior posterior ethmoidal artery, the optic nerve for optic nerve fenestrations, also the sphenoid sinus uh, for optic nerve decompressions, which can then be done either pre alone or via the pre and endonasal approach. The superior and superior lateral approach is the workhorse approach for lesions affecting the middle and anterior cranial fossa, specifically your swinoid wing meningiomas. So with the superior eyelid approach, we can now address all the problems associated with swinoid wing meningiomas, the proptosis, the visual loss, um, the intracranial component and the orbital component of the tumor. So we make a, a four-step uh, surgical uh, procedure starting off with the endoscopic um, pre or endonasal uh, medial optic nerve decompression and followed by a lateral approach removing all the hypostatic bone and then lastly doing the intracranial and the orbital tumor component. Um, many approaches exist and you can work with the maxillofacial surgeons as well to address orbital floor fractures and uh, through a conjunctival incision uh, you can have great access to the floor of the orbit for your orbital floor fractures that can then be repaired with just a septal graph or even with a plate if need be. Thank you.